Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, delivered a statement during his visit to the headquarters of the U.S. Naval Support Facility in the Kingdom, where he praised the strategic relations between Bahrain and the U.S. and the ongoing coordination between them to safeguard security and peace across the region. His Majesty the King affirmed the keenness of Bahrain to strengthen its relations with the U.S. to achieve global security and peace. His Majesty was accompanied by the Bahrain Defense Force Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the National Security Advisor, Royal Guard Commander, Major General Azan Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and Royal Guard Special Force Commander Staff Colonel Azan Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King was received by the Commander of U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and U.S. 5th Fleet's Commander Vice Admiral Charles Bradford Cooper, U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain Stephen Bondi, and Commander of the Royal Bahrain Naval Force. His Majesty the King performed the Naval Military Salute and the Royal Anthem was played welcoming His Majesty. His Majesty then greeted a number of the U.S. 5th Fleet members. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to the Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command for the invitation. His Majesty was briefed on the military cooperation between the two friendly countries as well as their humanitarian operations along with other countries to secure their freedom of navigation and smooth maritime trade flow in the region and the world. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Gadabiya Palace. The cabinet extended its congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the citizens of Bahrain and Arab and Islamic countries on the occasion of Eid al Fitr. The cabinet expressed concerns over the armed confrontations between the Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces. The cabinet called on both parties to exercise restraint and engage in dialogue to reach a peaceful solution that preserves Sudan's security and stability and protects the interests of the Sudanese people. The Cabinet discussed several memorandums during the meeting and approved the following. A memorandum submitted by the Civil Service Bureau regarding restructuring and developing the work of several government agencies to increase efficiency and improve performance. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to four proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet took note of the ministerial reports on the outcomes of the second meeting of the Bahraini Qatari follow-up committee. This includes the restoration of diplomatic relations between Bahrain and Qatar in accordance with the United Nations Charter and the Vienna Treaty on Diplomatic Relations of 1961. The Cabinet also reviewed the outcomes of the consultative meeting between the GCC countries Jordan and Iraq. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued a circular on Eid al Fitr holiday for the year 1444 Hijri. According to the circular, the Kingdom's ministries, authorities, and public institutions will close on the day of Eid al Fitr and the two days that follow. The circular added that if any of the Eid holidays coincide with an official holiday, an extra day will be given in lieu. The chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, REHC, Zayna Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued a dick appointing the following directors at the REHC Ibrahim Faisal Mohammed Al Malki, Director of Communications, Maryam Mohammed Mahmoud, Director of Services and Information Systems, Aisha Ali Nasser Al Nasser, Director of Financial Resources, and Abdurrahman Khalifa Saad Bukhamas, Director of Studbook. The visit of the Minister of Interior to the open prison complex asserted that the alternative sanctions project is moving in the right direction based on the humanitarian and civilized principles of the reform project of His Majesty the King. More in this report. The visit of His Excellency, the Interior Minister, to the open prisons complex asserted beyond any doubt that the alternative sanctions project is moving in the right direction based on the humanitarian and civilized principles of the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in a way that contributes to the development of the criminal justice system and the continuation of national efforts to promote human rights. The endorsement of the Royal Decree No. 24 of 2021 by His Majesty the King, which allows the replacement of the original sentence before the start of its implementation with an alternative sanction or more, contributed to expanding the application of the law and moving forward in the development of the reformation system. With 558 inmates covered in the alternative penalties in Ramadan, the beneficiaries of the provisions of the law since its implementation have reached 5,432 inmates. In addition, 46 have been enrolled in the latest training and rehabilitation programs within the Open Prisons Program, which is considered an important stage in the alternative sanction project. This means that the development and seriousness are significant feature of this national project. I thank His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and His Excellency the Interior Minister. Thank you. The King provided many things to inmates. He did not forget anyone. Thank you, His Majesty the King and His Excellency the Interior Minister, for the alternative sanctions program and the pardon. By the grace of God, this mistake won't be repeated. We thank the wise leadership for replacing the penalty and reintegrating us into society. We apologize for the mistakes that won't be repeated. By the grace of God, I thank His Majesty the King and His Excellency, Interior Minister, for all that they have offered us. I thank the Reformation and Rehabilitation Directorate and the General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing. All services reflect the dedication of the government to the citizens' interests. The Interior Ministry has made us happy for the return of my beloved father, Ramadan Karim. The alternative sanction project will remain a bright side of the national milestones and a qualitative leap in the human rights system, along with a matter of national pride with its constructive achievements and initiatives within the framework of the rule of law. The chairman of the Sunni Endowments Council, Sheikh Dr. Rashid al Hajri, inaugurated an Eid open prayer area in Bidaya, covering 2,000 square meters to accommodate 2,300 worshippers. Dr. al Hajri praised the care of His Majesty the King for places of worship, hailing the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He said that the prayer sites will serve people living in Bidaya and other neighboring areas which are witnessing urban expansion. An implementation of the order of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to launch a development scheme of houses of worship across Bahrain and open, restore and revamp 30 Sunni and Jafari mosques. The chairman of the Jafari Endowments Council, Yusuf Al Saleh, announced the completion of the revamp work of Al Hayak Mosque in Muharraq and Sheikh Mohsen Mosque in Jid Hafs. Al Saleh praised the care and support given to houses of worship in Bahrain during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. He also commended the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. 
under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, and the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments commemorated Laylat Al Qadr and held the closing ceremony of the 27th edition of Bahrain Quran Grand Prize at Ahmed Al Fatih Mosque. His Majesty's patronage of the prize embodies his keenness on spreading the teachings of Quran among the various segments of society. There were 4,063 contestants in the 27th edition, of whom 2,003 were male and 2,060 were female. Since its inception, the, com the competition aims to adopt distinguished memorizers of the Quran and prepare them to be reformers in their society and nation. The competition comes 27 years after its inception under the patronage of the late Sheikh Isa bin Salman al-Khalifa as it instills the principles of Quran in the youth to serve it and spread its teachings.